Today's Captain's Blog was made possible by a grant from Brad Wilmot, who claims full responsibility for my actions throughout the course of today. I had to figure a thing out, so I figured I'd shoot blog of this to share it with somebody else, because I can't be the only guy who ever has to do this, and in the spirit of you can learn just about anything on YouTube, I figured I'd share this one, because this was a bit of a job. Oh my god, how did I do that? If you're wondering about how delicate my touch can be, note that I just cut through one layer of tape without cutting through the one below. Because I'm trying to avoid scratching the painted surface beneath. There's no way to not, but you can at least mitigate that or minimize it. Pick an M word, any M word you like. I'll go with mephitic because this job stinks. So, here's your puzzle. You have a piece of tape that is that wide. There we go. Okay. You have a pipe that is that diameter. Mm -hmm. And you want to get 50% coverage at about a 45 degree angle because it has to match the rest of the machine. Well, you can't. Can't be done. And the reason is math, really. It's, the reason is math. And that's because to get a perfect 40, the, the angle that you have to lay it on to get a 50% coverage is dependent upon the width of your tape, the diameter of the pipe. So you have to compromise something. The most important thing at a distance for just basic visual is about a 50% coverage. So here's how you do that. Here's how you figure out what your angle is without having to do any insane math. We have to do old school math. So, you know the, the width of the tape is arbitrary, the diameter of the pipe is arbitrary. Our entire goal is about 50% coverage. This could be done more exactingly, but it'd have to be done by somebody who has way more patience than I do. So it starts by setting a band of tape around the top of your pipe. The more exact you get this to the top of the pipe, the better. And this is, of course, assuming that someone cut your pipe square. This is square enough. Now that 80-20 rule? Yeah. 
this, this is where we get into that. All right, so now you have a band of taper on your pipe and this gives you one tape width of length on the pipe. Now, put a mark on the pipe, on the end. It can be anywhere, it doesn't matter. But just put a mark on the pipe. And set the pipe like that with the mark away from you and eyeball that for center. Now, I have ISO calibrated eyeballs. Your mileage may vary. Now, set that line. And I've got this set for the thickness of the pipe. So, well, I had it set for the thickness of the pipe till I kicked it. So let's set this for the thickness of the pipe again. Which is just about there. Actually, I can make this even easier. Watch. We got the one inch line. Center that on your line and make sure that your measurements across are even. And when you hit the point where the measurements all line up, like thus, you can follow that line straight across. And now you've got diameter markings. They are diametrically opposed. That's what that means, by the way. If you've ever wondered what the term diametrically opposed means, that's what it means. It's across the diameter. So now we take this tool. We put it up here like this. Well, to make it easier, chase your line over the edge, just by eye. Go around, chase it over the edge. Make sure to draw in the tape, not the thing. And then bring your line down and remember these don't have to be absolutely dead nuts on this is hand layout okay eh? Eh. so now we have one width of tape with two lines 180 off halfway between them and this is where I just lay it down and I have them opposite Put a mark halfway down your tape. Right there. So, line, line, dot. The lines are 180 off and the dot is at 90 degrees halfway between them. Then you take a piece of tape. Like that. You want it a little bit long. Get your shaft in a comfortable position. And you want to leave this to hang out because you're going to have to wrap around and you want to have enough end to hang off the end. But just connect the top of this line to the top edge of your tape to this dot. And it may take a couple times to get the angle where you want it. But it's really easy to mess with that angle at this phase. There. And we're not perfect but we're really, really close. And you'll notice when I come around, my tape comes out just about, it's because my angle isn't dead nuts on, but my tape comes out to just about where my other line is. So if I continue this around here, now this is where it gets tricky and this is your big source of variability. The tape is paper and it will stretch. So you need to put just enough tension that it lays flat and you, you, let, it, you let the tube guide the angle. Because if you lean a little bit, you'll get a wrinkle in it. So you want to have no wrinkles. So you pull the tape out like this far, and then you just rotate the tube, and you do this slow. And look! We end up... Now we're, we're like an eighth down here, and we're like an eighth down here. So I can live with that. Our, our error, we're shifted... Let's say we're shifted down tube an eighth at that line. Okay, we're shifted down tube an eighth at this line. So it's good. It's really good. And you just follow it on down slowly and carefully. This is one of those things that it would be a lot easier if I had a friend to hold my shaft. But I can, I can do this on my own. I have a lot of training in this. But keeping the tape long makes it easier. 
length is always a benefit when working with your shaft and especially remembering that it is important to wrap your shaft for safety. And uh, by putting these markings on here, the, the caution yellow and black markings, I am in fact wrapping my shaft for safety. We're going to be painting it, so I may be putting a latex coating on my shaft, but today we're actually doing this with uh, probably an acrylic enamel, because I'll be using a, a spray paint, just rattle canning this shit, because this is a uh, non-super critical thing. Which is why I haven't bothered to like sand off the crusty bits. I don't really mind a little bit of crusty bits on my shaft, especially at the base. You'll have that. You go all the way down to the base. And then tear that off, follow it all the way around to the last wrap, and press, and then take this way back up to the top, and press, and then you gotta trim it. There you grab your handy dandy razor blade of science. It's easier to trim from the acute side. There is a way to cheat at this that I discovered but I didn't use because I didn't I didn't think it'd be good enough but I think having done this a few times now I think it would work. With the trim off piece you could use this on the next tube to start and establish your angle and it'll exactly match that but you've got to be perfect and laying it in, and that only works if your tube is cut really, really, really perfectly square. But you could use this as a cheater piece. I'm not. You can see that I've got three of them sitting over here now. Uh, <laughs> but I figured it out with the thing. I'm not saying the cheater piece idea is bad, I just didn't have the finesse to be able to pull that off. So I did it via layout. So that is how you mask a tube for, and then you just come back and trim this off, which is where we began our video, and I take you now full circle. As I attempt to not carve into my ankle. Though if I did, I'd do it at a very nice 50% angle. Now this isn't a 45 degree angle. And the reason, or yeah, this isn't a 45 degree angle and the reason this isn't a 45 degree angle is math. With the right thickness of tape, you could do this at a 45 degree angle. But you'd have to have the diameter of your tube match the width of your tape. And in this application, the thing, the initial measurement is for this was the diameter of the tube. That was the first critical measurement and that measurement was determined by the capacitor string we had to put inside it. That determined not only the length of the tube from the number of capacitors, but the diameter of the tube by the size of the capacitors. So that's how we got that first number. So now we know how big our tube is because this tube is designed to be a capacitor housing. That's that's its mission in life. And while I am very big on making these pretty, like this is a finished demonstration, it's supposed to be nice and pretty, at the end of the day, form follows function, engineering rules. So that determined the diameter and length of the pipe. Oh, I got them both. Okay, cool. And that's the, oh my God, I'm done. How about that shit? All right. So there are, our three masked tubes. And now I'm going to go paint them black. And now you know how to mask a tube for 50% coverage in painting. If you have to do yellow and black stripes, or if you're a hack on the internet and just want to copy my work, now you can.
Also, bonus points for the first time I laid it out. That, by the way, was a 45 degree angle. I laid it out using the, the angle on the thing. I put it in there so that that'll get painted black and you'll never see it. Ha! Let's go paint. I ain't get it. Oh, fuck! I wish you'd have got that on tape. That would have been hilarious. That was cool. Hey guys, welcome to today's Captain's Vlog. It's 13, 18 hours. I know it's the second segment of the vlog, but just suck it, okay? I'm concentrating. We learned about, we learned about geometry. Geometry? Geometry. What flavor candy canes are these? These are the Batman wishes he had put out more cardboard for it. Actually, if I recall, I went to lay down more cardboard. You're like, nah, it's fine. Well, for the caps. It was fine for the caps. No, you were painting the tubes when I went to do it. Oh, yeah, it was back in the early yellow phase. I hate yellow. God, I hate yellow. Like, I do this, and yellow takes, like, two days, and black's done in a couple hours. All right. Now we wait. Time is 13.20. So, after lunch, maybe. 15, 59 hours. Now we do the next area. Cool. Now we wait. Today's Captain's Blog was made possible by a grant from Brad Wilmot, who claims full responsibility for my actions throughout the course of today. <laughs>